but very, very dangerous. If you spotty sense, you know, I was like, oh, something's off. And I'm just like, man, I'm waiting to hear something, you know. On this episode, you guys asked for it. I've been, you know, people have been asking me, when are you going to tell your stories? When are you going to, when are you going to talk about your life? Well, today's the day, people. And it's not like everybody's been asking, but people, you know, hey, man, you always talk about this story here, but it won't tell it. You know, I've done that a few times on the podcast, but, but yeah, so this episode's about me uh, and it's going to be like a part one because we're going to talk about the early years, like young me, like young Yehola Tiger, uh, Yehola Anti-Tiger fourth, young, young buck. But, um... Before we do that, I watched a movie. I, I'm going to talk about some movies here and some things that I've seen um, over the course of, I guess, a month that I've been watching a bunch of stuff and kind of collecting, you know, things that I've been watching. And I watched a movie the other night, and it has stuck with me because it's kind of a wild. It's it's wild, but it's kind of a. It makes you kind of think about things a little bit and. The movie, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Now, if you haven't, go check it out. It's on Paramount Plus, and it's also on Pluto TV, I believe. But it's called Mother! Exclamation point. So it's Mother. And one thing about that movie is there's so many metaphors and allegories for religion. But it also, like, could, you know, means, t- like, some totally other different crazy stuff. And... One thing that I like that it basically details a chron- in, almost in chronological order of how the Bible took place and those stories, and but it's told in a different way. It's very interesting. Um, the movie progresses; it's more crazy, more crazy, more crazy, and then there's metaphors for all times of this these religions that people to now today that practice. But it stars uh, Jennifer Lawrence and Javier. I think it's Javier Borden. Um, those are the two people, and she plays mother, and he plays him. And so, it's a very interesting movie. I, I still am thinking about different ways that that could be interpreted, and it kind of shook me a little bit. I was really had really took time to think about that. But it's called Mother, Paramount Plus, and uh, Pluto TV. Go check it out. I have not caught up on Res Dogs. I apologize, but I will say that the episode, the latest episode that I've seen. With uh, Brownie, Cheese, Big, um, and Bucky, that was that might have been that was a, that was up there for me. I know that there's been a few that are up, that have been up there for me, but I just like you know the way the way that story was told and you know basically teaching them to learn you know to live off the land and then you know obviously that old Muskogee way you know of, of fishing was detailed in that, which is real cool too, um, but. I think that show, I think that show's got some juice in it, man. I think it's got, it could go another two seasons, I believe. And I hate that it is ending. Um, and, uh, but, you know, there's probably something down the works. We'll probably have like a spinoff of, uh, we got to get the old heads back. You know, we got to, you know, we got to do a, a single show or a spinoff show. It could be one season, 13 episodes, but do a spinoff show with Big or do a spinoff show with, uh, Studi and, uh, uh Graham Green and all those old old cats, you know, and but um if you guys can hear my cat in the background, he he's killing me right now. But but yeah, I need to catch up. I know the latest episode dropped and I know that there, there was some there was a lot of funny funny stuff going on about I guess the soundtrack, but um but yeah, if you haven't if you guys have if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I know a lot I've had some people message me like, hey man, I appreciate you recommending that show, which, you know, it, it it's a great show. Um Another kind of thing that I that I had been watching, um, and it's kind of uh, kind of a crazy story, but I really don't want to get into it because season two just dropped. But I, I just recently watched the Murdoch Mysteries, the Murdoch Murders or whatever, out of South Carolina. Um, I don't man, I, with having kids and and you know just I remember myself as like a, a knucklehead and like I, I don't feel like I ever was that big of a knucklehead though. Just some of these the stuff that these kids got away with and the, and the dad and. And how that whole thing, but it's on Netflix season one. I think season two just dropped, but it's, I think it's called like Murdoch Mysteries or something. It's on Netflix. Um, go check that out. And you know, finally, the last movie that I, that I want to talk about that really got me. It almost got me. And, it, and this is like a one of those movies that like I 
I have been watching since the first one. And I, and I finally got a chance to watch Fast X. Fast 10. And they always get me. They always, always get me with that, with that, uh, that Wiz Khalifa. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, oh no. Because, you know, I think of Paul Walker. And Paul Walker, you know, growing up for me, um, I had I had a cousin. Uh, and that was like his thing, was, was being able to like, he, he like loved the Need, need for Speed games. Um, he had, you know, he had all that stuff. And, and I was thinking about him when I think about Paul Walker. And when Paul Walker passed, it was like a double-edged sword, and so. But I love the fact that they 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 make it seem like he's still alive and he's still doing things out like outside, like it's un you know un camera can't see it. But I absolutely hated the ending where they just like basically cut the movie off, like almost like at the climax of the what's going on, and then obviously you know at the end you get a, you get a surprise. But this movie had so many of the old stars in it. It was like, wow. I was like, dang, this person's back. This person's back. And now this person's back. It's like, dude, they're trying to make this into like some kind of crazy uh, <laughs> Fast and the Furious Avengers where all the old stars come back from the dead. No, I'm just kidding. But no, but um, but no, I watched that. I thought I thought that was really good. I know the, I was looking at the critic score and it was pretty low, but the, like the, the audience score was pretty high, so... Um, that's another movie, uh, or that's the last movie that that I that I want to talk about. But like I said, we're gonna get <clears throat> we're gonna move on <clears throat> to to my stories. And and growing up, so I'm originally from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. And you know, growing up there, there's always things that like. And if you're if you listen to this and you've never been to Tahlequah, or you're like I've only been to Tahlequah to go to the river, or you've only been to Tahlequah for I don't know, you know. What if, for whatever reason, you were just passing through? Um, it's a very weird town, like a very weird, and it, you know, we call it talent quality, where it's like it's talent, like talent quality, like it's talent qual- quality, and that could be a good, a good or bad thing. But I always say I'm, I got that talent quality in me because there's something not right. So, you know, sometimes I'd be kind of off on things. You know, I'd be kind of, kind of wilding out. But, but there's always something, you know, that. It's something about that town and that city that's just different, I would say. I would like equate it to like somewhere like Anadarko. Like Anadarko, there's no there's no place like Anadarko, you know, that I would say. Or there's no place I'm trying to think of some other random, you know, that like those people are just different. And, you know, growing up there, I never really I never really thought it was like dangerous or any type of thing, but you know, we we were my parents, we moved to a kind of a place um, as you as you drive in to Tahlequah it's on the left hand side on uh, Stick Ross Mountain Road or Stick Ross uh, Road, I believe is what's called. And you know that's like my early my, my earliest memories was is living there. I don't really remember much before that, but I remember living there and you know growing up there. I mean, one of the saddest things ever is we found a stray dog. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a, a weird kind of. A spooky episode was going to be kind of like a day. This kind of, you know, forgot about this story, but no, but we used to have a dog and, and, and I found it or we found it. And, you know, it was like my, one of my first memories is that dog. And we had to give it away because we just couldn't afford at the time to have a dog. And that's just kind of how times were, you know, on on the Cherokee rest for basically a lot of people, you know, uh, most of my parents, they worked Um, my, my mom, uh, my my dad basically worked overnight, you know, my mom worked during the day and she was going to school full time and my dad was doing the same thing at, at some, some aspects. And, you know, so it was just, it was rough for, for, you know, for us sometimes, you know, but we'd always kind of take care of ourselves and, you know, that's, we were really close with my grandpa and that's kind of where I'm going to lead off is, you know, he, he would always watch us during the summer times and he, when he retired, um, he basically watched us full time. And, um, you know, when we were growing, like I said, when we were growing up, we'd always go out to Merle Home Park and Merle Home Park, it has a very, a very soft spot in my heart because it's, I mean, that's like one of my, a lot of my first memories, a lot of stuff I can vividly remember, um, you know, was playing down in that Creek and messing around in the bridge. And, you know, I always tell a story, you know, we, we found a crawdad and, 
I was, you know, we were just being kids. He's like, hey, let's go ahead and let's let's go back and let's boil it. Let's eat it. And boy, I, I we didn't eat it. We uh, this is gonna sound terrible, people, you know. But basically, we boiled it and it was in some tap water. It was terrible. I was like, man, this is terrible. Like it didn't even cook right. Like water wasn't hot enough. It just was bad. And we had to bury him outside because we felt bad. But but you know we you know that that was a lot of my childhood. That was a lot of growing up. And and for my Cherokee people listening, and and just the capital Cherokees where you're born and raised it on in the capital. Uh, you know that's kind of a way to you know mess around. We're young, kind of playing in the creeks and. Um, at the time, that park before it got it got renovated like very minorly, but it used to have all these wooden or these uh, not wooden uh, metal slides, and you know I went to I went to Woodall, uh, shout out Woodall Wildcats, um, and you know we'd always have different things there, or you know I remember one of my first memories too was having an Easter egg hunt there. Well, my grandpa just lived down the road from there, and we'd walk. We I mean that was what we did. We we would train like. You know, he at a young at a young age he always was trying to get you know, my grandpa was always trying to make sure that we um, had some type of discipline and some type of uh, work ethic. So <clears throat> almost every morning when we when he'd come pick us up and his hoopty he had a green hoopty man barely God barely going <laughs> y'all can relate God just barely dang windows barely worked you had to like uh, you had to like put like press them up don't know how that thing was running but it but it was running be come pick us up from our from our house and he'd take us there and he'd take us back to the house and uh he always make sure we got our water and, and we would go, and we would run and we would run uh, down that road if y'all know what road i'm talking about next to the uh kind of merle home comes at a t and that road that is not it's the t that goes back up towards tahlequah kind of more, like more um into tahlequah you know, we'd run that, and that's, you know, two miles, I think, is where he kind of, maybe mile and a half is how far he, maybe even a mile, maybe I'm, maybe in my mind, me me reminiscing on this, but, you know, we'd always run down there, and he'd say, and he always used to tell us, if you're going to come down here, make sure I'm down here, too, and well, I never, I never, as a kid, I ever understood that, I, I was like, well, I was like, you know, my parents letting us love run around, we wilding out, we, you know, we're some res dogs, and we just kind of, you know, getting into stuff all the time, and and, um, uh, you know, he'd always say that if you come into this park, you know, to make sure you're, uh, you know, I'm around, you know, you just want to, you know, make sure everything's all right. But so we go down there, we mess around and <clears throat> like I said, playing the Creek, man, that was a lot of fun, especially when it rained. I was like, you know, that water would all be rushing through there and we'd be swimming and, and, but, uh, I remember one time we were sitting there at a picnic table and I remember this, uh, up kind of towards the bathrooms and, he told me this story. He told both me and my brother this story that has stuck with me. And I think about it probably about every day, honestly. Um, but now he's gone. And so basically, he and like I said, I don't know. And I was being a kid. I'm not exactly sure if this was like this happened or if this was just, you know, things, you know, grandparents and parents told kids to make sure that they act right. Um, <clears throat> but there was a kid um, that lived around in that area. He said this is years ago that used to mess around down here at night and he'd really get into stuff and he'd be running those trails and just being, you know, just doing kid things at, in, at night. But one night he snuck out and he, he got down to the park and he looks and he sees a fire. The creek was real dry at the time. The, it wasn't, the water wasn't up. And so there's, if you, you know, next to the bridge, there was a little alleyway where you can kind of walk down to the creek and there's a little area where you could sit there. You know, you, there was like, People would put logs down there where they can just kind of hang out, and I'm sure probably teenagers doing teenager things. And and he said that the boy saw this light. It was like a small fire um, in in between these kind of this uh, brush that had a little pathway in it. And he goes down there, and there's a man standing down there. And the man's like, "Oh uh, hey, yeah, come on now, you know, let's talk. Let's just talk. You know, you're not doing nothing. I ain't done. I'm just hanging out." And boy goes down there and he they're hanging out and he's telling them all these stories and this kid's really listening he's really you know not really kind of paying attention to, to what's what's going on and the fire start getting real low real low and that man goes hey let me go ahead and find some firewood let's get let me, let me make sure we can hang out some more i'll make sure this fire's good for us and he goes and the kid goes okay well you know he started to notice well this guy's kind of tall you know and he started looking up and he goes, man he's real tall 
kind of looks, you know, he kind of goes down and they look down and the man had hooves for feet. And the boy and the boy looked back up at the man and the man said, you know who I am, you know, you know, you know what I'm, you know, you know what I am. The boy took off running, went home and, you know, it scared him. He was scared that he didn't want to go down to that park anymore. And it, you know, and so that story he told, I remember being a kid, like on pins and needles, like, what, what? You know, oh my God, you know. And I'd ask him a million questions. And that was one thing that he always used to tell me. You know, I used to laugh at my, my grandpa. He'd always say, man, you just, just be quiet and listen. Just listen. Because I'm a, I've always been known to, I've always been a, a person that asks questions. I always want to know why. And he always used to get on to me for that. And he said, just listen, just listen. I'm like, all right, okay, you know. And and so that story has stuck with me for all these years. And, and I'm gonna, like, obviously with everything that I that I do, I'm going to pass it down to my daughters, but um, but that was the first story and that's, you know, in my memory that he told when I, you know, out at the park. And so from then on, I kind of was like weary of, you know, the park kind of, you know, we'd be running around in those trails and I always kind of look and, and allegedly now I, like I said, I don't know if this is, I have, I've tried to do some research on this. I needed to look a little deeper. Uh, but they said that there was a let some alleged suicides up there. Um, and and I remember hearing that when I was a young guy too, and I was already like kind of even more weary now. So, uh, but you know, as I get older, we get you know we get school age, you know we're more school age, and and I think I'm like in first grade maybe. We had this. I think it was I don't know if it was Earth Day or if it was something that was whether it was still right before it got dark, like before it started getting dark really early, and we were running late. Uh, the bus was, and um, we had. And this is it was like an FFA type thing and dang crazy story. I know my mom when she hears this, she's gonna be like, dang, I remember that. So we, I had this FFA thing where I had to bake cookies. And if I mean I'm a good cook, I can cook up anything. But what I cannot do is cookies. I am terrible at cookies. I, I'm awful. I'm like I'm one of the worst. Them things be coming out like hockey pucks. You know, be out there, you know, kicking them around like rocks, man. But, <laughs> but. I go like literally like eight o'clock at night. My mom's getting ready because she's got to get up early. And she, I'm like, hey, mom, um, I got to make some homemade cookies. And my mom's like, what? I was like, well, she's like, when do you need them? I said, tomorrow. She looked at me so crazy. I, oh, my God. And I'm not going to lie, guys. Them some of the worst cookies I, we ever made. I mean, they were awful. I don't know how anybody ate them. Now, I, I mean, I, I kind of, you know, did my thing on them. And they were terrible. But we had to bring them. And so we go through that event and, and we always, we stopped off at Merle Home Park and it was later in the day because the FFA judging and stuff went on later than, or went on later than it should have. And it was running late and all of us kids decide to go play hide and seek up in the trails at Merle Home. And I already knew kind of like, Hey, like I don't, you know, let's make, let's like do it in pairs. You know, I was kind of already apprehensive anyway, because that story that my grandpa told. But, you know, being a kid, you kind of forget and you just go. You just start playing. And we're playing, we're playing, we're playing. And, and in those trees, it gets dark. It gets darker than what it really is. And you can't really tell if it's like it's getting dark or, you know, if it's still light out. You know, it just it's just it's a canopy of trees. And I get tagged it. Okay, I'm the one that's got to chase kids around now. So I'm running, I'm running, and... I finally see somebody, but it's a sh- it's a like it's almost like I I can see them and I can see the outline of them, but they're they're like it's almost like they're they they round the bend as I'm running after them. So I chase and I'm just and I'm getting closer closer and I'm like hey I can I can get them and then you can see it's an outline of a, someone smaller you know like a kid and I'm running I'm getting close and I'm go out to reach them and I'm just just miss them and I'm like man I almost got them and so then. I realized I was off the trail. Like I was off a little bit off the trail and kind of started looking around like, oh, I'm on a game trail. I'm not even in the, well, I started kind of looking around and, and kind of backtracking and, and, you know, I kind of knew where I was at. So I, I come back and, you know, kind of find the trail and, and I, I walk back down to the entrance and, and, uh, I'm met by a teacher because we've been looking for you. Where did you go? We was hollering for you. We were all, you know, she's saying that we, they were in the, you know, at the lower part of the trail looking for me. They were yelling for me. And I didn't hear them. And I remember being a kid, being all spooked out about that. And 
I can't remember what teacher it was, but I remember the people that were out there, but I remember chasing them and just, just close to getting them. But, you know, just kind of things like that out there just have always been kind of strange. And as I get older, I think my memory on that, just it's like I, I remember it, but I can't at the same time. Like I remember being there, but I can't remember what that looked like because it's so long ago. <clears throat> I mean, 20 something years ago, I guess now, but but as I, but as I, but I said, I can't quite remember what it looked like or what it was, but I just remember chasing a kid and realizing I was off on the trail. And, you know, as a kid, you don't think nothing of it. You're just kind of like, oh, okay, well, keep moving. And then, but, you know, we used to mess around a lot out there, Woodall. Like, I had friends whose parents were teachers there, and we would always be there at night. Like, and it's creepy out there. If y'all ain't never been out to Woodall schools, it's out kind of off the main highway. Uh, going from Tahlequah to, uh, to Muskogee. Um, it's off to the side. I think it's like a route something, road or whatever. And we'd always be out there at night because during the wintertime, you know, obviously it gets, light, it gets dark sooner. So I'd be out in after school program. Well, then I'd just be like, and I'd call my parents or whatever. And they'd say, I'd say hey, can I go home with so-and-so and come pick me up? And they're like, yeah, we'll come get you, whatever. No big deal. And so I'd always be messing around after, you know, after school's out. There's nobody there. And there's, you know, three or four or five of us kids and we'd be running around. And, you know, one night we, uh, we were out there and it wasn't really night. It was more evening, but it was dark. It was like six o'clock, but it was dark outside. And we were all playing hide and go seek again. And we were all kind of hiding out. And, you know, my buddy, uh, he was the person that was, the, you know, it. And he was chasing. He said that, and so we're all like laughing. We're all back at the school. Like, well, he's never, you know, we made it back. You know, he's not, or it wasn't. It was something like tag or something, but we had to get to home base without getting tagged. Like we had to wait till he seen us or something. It was some kid game that we used to play. We used to play a game, dang, at what all we call it, like brain sucker or something. But you climb up, you climb up the the side of the the jungle gym, and if you got your brain sucked, you had to fall like no, like just to just fall, like you'd just be falling, like and it was probably like eight feet up in the air, and you had to fall, and if you you know you had to fall, just kind of, I keep saying fall. But yeah, it was like there was no embrace. It was just you just laying on your back. But crazy. <clears throat> that's red kid. That's res kid games right there, man. Y'all just playing crazy games like that or playing, uh, uh, you know, football. We was playing football out there. Uh, no pads, but we'd be out there on concrete tackling each other, bleeding, all types of stuff. Crazy, man. But so he, so we're playing this game. And I can't remember the name of the game, and, and we all get back to home base. Well, my, the person, my buddy, who was it, he never came back. And I was like, what, we're like, what's going on? So we're kind of looking around, and 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 we finally end up, uh, you know, finding him. And he's like, oh, I got y'all. I said, so no, we've already been to hit. We already hit home base. But where have you been? He's like, man, I've been trying to chase this person. He said, who is it? Who who's all? And he started counting. He started looking around. Everybody was there with us. Everybody who was in our group. And he said that he was chasing somebody, and they said he said, "Man, they were so fast. Like I'd get so close to them, and then they would just like whoo, zoom off." And I don't ever know what those were. You know, I don't know if it's LP, I don't know if it's shadow people, but he said he got that close, and he just whiffed just barely to get them. And he said he chased he chased them for like ten minutes. He was like, hey, "I was going to get this person." He was just competitive like that. And you know, Wood always had some creepy stuff out there. I mean, I remember. You know, hearing noises from, uh, like it sounded like somebody. Uh, so if you ever been to the, to the school, there's a, a pathway that goes all the way down, and I, this is kind of a crazy build that they did, but it's built off like kind of a ridge, almost like a hill. But there's a stairwell that goes all the way down, and it passes by these old basketball courts. I think they're now pickleball courts, but you will pass by that. You had the long jump that was right there, and then you go on down to the baseball field with the track. We'd always hear, you know, we'd be, you know, messing around at night and you'd always hear like it was someone walking up the steps, but then no one would come out those steps. Um, and you'd always hear things, uh, you know, like uh, people seeing like ghosts in the auditorium. That was another thing that, you know, no one ever wanted to be in the auditorium by themselves. I remember there was a group of kids that just like definitely did not want to be back there. And, you know, I think it was like, I can't remember what her name was, but Miss, I think it was, I ain't going to say her name, actually. But, dang, I almost dropped her name. She's about to be, she's about to be defamation of character. No, I was playing. <laughs> but, uh, but she ran something out of there, and the kids, I remember kids just did not want to, did not want to be there. And um, I know on the backside of the property, I know some of us Indian kids, we was always talking about LP out there. 
you know, messing with people, bringing them back there. Because there would be times where kids would somehow be back there. Like they would just end up back there. There was a playground that's on the kind of the front facing side, but there, the playground then kind of wrapped around all the way back to the gym. And then there was a little walkway that went up to the, the old gym. There's a new gym down there at the, at the entrance, but there's a, there was an old gym on campus. And if you go behind that gym, that's where they, we talk about, we were always talking about LP was back there because they take you off. They take your mind and they, you know, lead you off, said, you know, because you're just, you're, you're a little kid. You don't know better sometimes. But, you know, I, that was crazy when I, when I, I was like, what are you, I was like, what are you talking about somebody leading you off? You know, you chased somebody. And he said that he chased him like in a circle. Like it was crazy. He was describing, he was like, dude, I kept ending up in the same spot. Like, I, I I kept chasing them. It was like felt like I was you know running for days. But you know they do those things and those things are they are out there. And that's why I say Tahoe is so weird. Is because like it's city, but it's also country. It's like a mix of those of those people. Um, but you know, kind of you know going back to you know growing up and where I you know where I lived and you know being a younger you know, being a young kid, you don't really understand you know medicine and, and things like that and intention of people. Um, you know, I'm not going to drop any names on this, but, uh, you know, there was somebody who used to, you know, my, my grandmother used to be, uh, you know, with, um, I'm trying to be careful about this cause I don't want to, I don't know the family, there's the family, people are still out there and I don't want to say nothing that's disrespectful or, you know, say anything crazy about anybody, but you know, he used to, he, there's a person who used to mess with us, mess with my, my grandmother and, uh, mess with, uh, my dad and my, my uncles. And, you know, the whole time that we were in Tahlequah, you know, that was always a prevalent thing. Uh, my dad would, you know, he'd always, uh, have to shoot, shoot things off and, and, you know, get rid of things. And, uh, but it affected me and my brother and my, my brother doesn't really remember these things cause he was such a young guy and it's hard to remember some of these things. Um, but I'm, I'm two years older than him. So I, 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 and I always ask questions about these things too. So I kind of understood kind of what's going on a little bit, not a lot, but I knew somebody was messing with us. And, you know, we would be, our, our, uh, our room was facing towards the road. And so, you know, someone could just walk up and to our window that sometimes the blind was open. Some we'd leave it open by accident. And, you know, I remember one time playing Madden and I remember looking over and there was a, a silhouette of some, a man standing in that window and that window being mine is, you know, a kid could just stand normal, like a, four foot tall kid, but it was a grown man, um, standing in the window. But then I told him, you know, I'd tell, you know, I'd say, hey, somebody's watching us. Somebody's looking at us and there'd be nobody there. You know, a, a story, a story that I tell that I've told multiple times about, uh, one of our neighbor kids seeing, uh, basically we had a neighbor kid who was on or he's always messing with us. But, but, uh, one night he had seen someone on top of our roof, just standing there, no face. Um, and you know, there'd be times where, I'd get up in the middle of the night and it seemed like somebody was sitting, cause we had a, a chair, or we had a, a, a computer chair that sat kind of in the middle of the room next to the window. And, you know, there'd be times where I'd look, I'd be going to the bathroom cause Dan, when we was, you know, when we was little, I think it was me or my brother. I can't remember who it was. We put a tractor down the dang toilet and it clogged it up and ruined it forever. So we, so now we had to go from our room, which is on one end all the way down to the other end to, um, to my parents' room. Use the bathroom, and I know, dang, we was crazy. We was just doing dumb stuff, man. We was stupid, but but um, but there'd be times where I'd see a man sitting in that chair looking at me, uh, and I'd get scared and run back, and then I'd kind of creep my way back and gone. He's gone. Um, I never said that, I never really told people much about that because I always thought it was kind of a mirage, but I remember someone sitting in that chair watching me. And I'd always run back to my room and I'd kind of come back and that it'd be, he'd be gone, but it would just be an outline of a man. I wouldn't, there's no face. Um, I'm getting goosebumps, but, um, you know, there'd always be someone, it'd sound like somebody was walking on our roof, like just two feet, just two, especially at night. Um, but the man that, that, that would do this, he, he told my grandmother that he's, I'm going to mess with your family. I'm going to mess with your boys as long as I can. And, you know, that's something that st- has, you know, stuck with me when I was told this as a you know, older, you know, I found this out a couple of years ago of all the weird stuff that used to happen that, you know, my dad and my grandpa and all this kind of like, you know, just warning us, you know, you got to be careful who you mess around with. 
and you you know you, you may you know, it's got to be respectful to people, not do people wrong, and you know just try to teach us good values because you know this, these things are out there. These people know you know people know things, and that's why I always try to be very respectful to people, and you know especially when it comes to their time and you know in and. and and effort that they do and that you know they have make an effort to talk to me i always want to make sure i talk to people you know and it's not as you know fear it's just out of just respect it's just, i feel like you know my thing is, is i think respect is kind of lost um on a lot on a lot of things and i, I want to give people my time if i can't give people my time i'll always feel kind of bad but that's you know something i was always kind of ingrained in me is give is respect people and give them respect because if you give them respect you know, it's, it, they're going to give you respect back and, and respect is not, you know, just given it's earned. And so, but, but we'd always have things, you know, messing with us. And, and I, you know, growing up, I, I would hear, you know, stories of what my grandmother went through, uh, with this person. And, and it, it, I think to this day, it still makes me kind of sad because it, the, but the, the stories are so scary. I remember being a kid just being, and hearing a story or two, about it, but they'd never use the person's name and they would just say, Oh, your family member. Or, and then I found out it was my, you know, my grandma who passed when I was a, a junior in high school. Um, and so th- that's, that had always kind of plagued us in, 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 in a way where it was always around. And, you know, I, at a very young age, I was always taught, you know, I was basically not taught, but I was told about, um, you know, those bullets that you can say things to them and, and you put, you know, you doctor the bullet. Same thing that, that, uh, that, uh, the lead, the, the native leading investigator with the Sam, with the, the Oklahoma Girl Scout, that's what he did to that bullet, uh, to find, uh, Gene Hart. He had that bullet doctored and it's supposed to, you know, find, you know, someone who's got bad, you know, someone who's after you, the person that you're looking for. Um, you can direct it. And I remember being a, I remember being a kid, you know, uh, thinking about that all the time and when they're telling me these old ways and, and ways of how to, how to do things and just kind of telling me, not really teaching me, just, you know, just telling me what, what these things are, and what, what happens. And I always grew up, you know, call them Skilly or, uh, Stegini or, uh, uh Honka, you know, that's uh, multiple, you know, I'm Cherokee, Cherokee and Creek, man. Sometimes when people say things to me, I, I, I get my wires crossed and I kind of look at them and I'm like, oh, you're talking Cherokee here, you're talking Creek here. Um, I can, you know, I'm not saying I understand it fully, but I, you know, I can see, hear what I can hear, you know, but, but, um, but yeah, that was something that I always, you know, I think about today as, you know, a grown man who, who has, you know, kids and, and it was kind of a spooky time, you know, all this, you know, kind of those things happening and then, um, you know, in the next part of this, I'll talk about kind of my middle school years and early high school because that was a, a lot of stuff happened in that time um, that still kind of spooks me out and kind of you know I still get I still think about it because I, I lost a dog be- I lost a dog because of it um, you know it, it's just something that is always I always think about uh, when it comes to to my early part and um, you know another kind of crazy thing that I was, I was just sitting here thinking. Um, you know, much like I said, my grandpa grew, you know, we run around at, at Merle home all the time. And like I said, this story just popped up to me, but he always used to tell us, he would tell us in his neighborhood, which houses not to go to when we were trick or treat. Cause he had, a, he lived in a roundabout. And so it was basically a big OU. And so you, you would start and you just zigzag every house all the way down and all the way around up until uh, the other side of the road. Cause it was a big horseshoe kind of you. And so he always told us, you know, don't go to this house. He said, this man knows things. And if you ever guys have ever, I don't really say, oh, he knows medicine or he knows magic or he knows this. I just say he knows things. And I think, you know, someone mentioned to me before, they were like, why do you always say that? Like, why, why can't you just say it's what it is? I'm like, it's just how I was raised to say it, is they know things. And he knows things. And this guy knew things. And, you know, one thing that I always kind of got spooked out about when we'd run is, is, it's almost like they were inviting us in, the, this guy. And my brother and I, one year, trick-or-treating there. And we were zigzagging. And I always, I told, my, my brother was a little guy. He wasn't very old. And I think he might have been six. I think I was eight. And I said, hey, I said, come on. I said, come on, boy, we can't go, can't go in there. Can't go over there. Let's go over here. And so we go over there, and we get, I get back up to the, to the house. And my grandpa lived up on a kind of a hill, and you had to kind of 
walk up his driveway. <clears throat> and I look back and my brother's no, not anywhere to be found. And so we're running the neighborhood trying to find him. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, looking, Nate, Nate, Nate. And then come to find out, we found him. He was in that man's house. You know, and I remember my grandpa being real, not upset, but kind of worried, had a lot of anxiety about that. I remember I remember his face when he saw him come out of that house. Man said, oh, no, he's just giving him some candy. You know, my grandpa's kind of looking at him like, you know, what was you doing? Like, he was, you, you know, not saying that anything happened, you know, like predator, you know, but he... You know, he he always liked to mess with people. Is what I is what he, my grandpa always said. Is he'd always be messing with people, just making them forget things, or you know, just playing tricks on people. And he'd always and it sometimes would end not well. Um, you know, a story. You know, my my uncles were sta- were hanging out at a friend's house that was on the back side of that ho- of that man's house, and they're all hanging out. You know, being young teenagers, and and all of a sudden they looked up and they saw this half man, half bird kind of an owl looking man and that was him this is what my grandpa said it was him he know he knows those things that's that old way that's that old way that's how he got around and you know i, I remember him telling that story and i remember my uncles i still talk to my uh my uncle now i said i asked him about that said, and he you know he he still gets kind of spooked out about that because that's it was always around you know you and that's one thing too is you always kind of had to not keep a secret but you just had to you know you know you had to be not as boastful about it and some people are and it's just not good but but anyways but yeah so he comes out my brother comes out and i remember my you know my they're like oh everybody's all oh thank god you know it wasn't you know you didn't go missing or something and you know i, I always kind of wonder if that's kind of what set things in motion I, I think there's a lot of things that set things in motion with with our lives but um but another kind of <clears throat> weird thing that always has happened to my mom is is, is She'd always have birds or animals attack her. It'd be weird. The weirdest thing be, you know, we were driving down the road in this, in the old red Chevy that I drove in high school and boy, there'd be birds dive bombing her just anytime. It don't matter, you know, any type of way it was, they were dive bombing her. Like they, there was a bird, we had a crow come in and they ain't try to peck her eyes out. <clears throat> She's driving in the middle of the road coming, coming, uh, past, uh, the Phillips on, uh, not the Phillips. Coming up to the to the casino now, where the casino is at on the right hand side when you're coming into Tahlequah, it's like dang, had a bird fly through the fly through the the the, uh, the driver's side window, man, about to get her about you know she's all. I remember her swerving. It's crazy, but we always had weird things like that happen, and and not and as I got older, things kind of escalated, and things got even more weird because we moved to where my parents are now uh, when I was in sixth grade. You know, we're going to be talking about um, kind of my my early, more early years, but kind of middle, more, more middle school and kind of the things that happened when, when we moved from Tahlequah to the Muskogee area. And, you know, I kind of was sitting back thinking over the over the holiday, over Thanksgiving, and um, it's one thing that's kind of crazy is that when you go back somewhere where you haven't been in a while and you start remembering things. You know, I remember when we moved from Tahlequah, and I remember being kind of, not uh, mad, but just kind of feeling weird because, you know, a lot of times, you know, in our, in my young life at the time, you know, we had grew up around Tahlequah Sequoia High School. You know, that was, we, I mean, we probably went there during the summertime when, you know, they had basketball practices. I remember uh, walking in with my papa and, and uh, papa, my uh, papa Tiger and, um, uh, and uh, Louis Jackson, the athletics director at the time. And, you know, we sat and watched summer practice, you know, or the guy shooting around. Um, some names, uh, you know, that are etched in Sequoia lore and, and legacy and history. And, you know, those guys that went to the state t- or state uh, tournament and played Blake Griffin. Uh, I'm not going to say their names, but, you know, if you're from that Tahlequah area or you, you play Tahlequah Sequoia, you know the, the, the names I'm talking about. And those guys were, were good players. I ended up playing with them as I got older when I was in college. High, you know, late high school, you know, playing those guys and pickup games and I ain't gonna lie, I was dusting them up. Had to hit them with a few crosses, a little step back, a little Euro step, Manu Ginobili style, you know, had to, had to do, had to do them, do them crazy. I'm sorry if you're on that state title team for Sotalqua Sequoia and I had to do you like that. I'm sorry, but it was my time. Your time was over. <laughs> no, I'm just playing, but, but like I said, we grew up around that and seeing that and, you know, I remember, you know, being a young guy and me and my brother, my brother was really big uh, cross country at the time and was really good at it. He had won a few races, you know, against grown people. He's probably like third, fourth grade. 
maybe even second grade. But he was running, and you know, Louis was always like, "Yeah, I can't wait for the your grandkids." Tell him, talking to my grandpa, just like, "Yeah, I can't wait for the Tiger boys to get over here at Sequoia and do some things." You know, I always really thought about that as I got older, and kind of the way my high school basketball career and and later on college kind of shaped out. Like things could have been a lot different, you know, dealing with the people I dealt with. But anyways, so we make that move, and and one of the first, probably for within the first week, you know, we. And some family members, it was me, myself, my brother, and my uh, now past cousin. You know, we was doing a lot of exploring of the place. It's got 20 acres, you know, why not? And so my uh, to describe my parents' place is kind of, it's a driveway. It goes up kind of a little uh, hill, and then it flattens out. And then you got the barn, the kind of a drive where you can park. You have a, a garage, shed, and then the, the main house. And on the other side of the main house is towards the river. And you go back down a hill and you basically get down to the river. And it gets kind of the bottom area where there's a trail, kind of a, where you can see, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, different trails that go along the river that's like public land. And, you know, we decided we was going to go, you know, exploring that day. And it's probably about noon. It was middle of summer, probably August, maybe early August, right before school started. And, Maybe even late uh, July. I can't exactly remember, but so we we go down there and we you're kind of looking around and as you as you go past the fence, it's you know it's kind of a little cliff or a little bluff, and then you kind of climb down. And we was like, man, this is a good place for coyotes and maybe even a mountain lion because there's all these little like caves that you can go underneath the rock, like it goes under, and it's not really big. It's just big enough for like a, you know the size of a dog or a cat. And you know we're going exploring and. We come across this spring, this really clean spring. And, you know, if you guys kind of some information, but like LP, they do sometimes surround themselves or have their home near a spring. Well, this spring had a little spout and it would spit water out. And the water, like it was so clear looking. Like I remember, you know, the it was like perfect. It was like it was groomed almost, you know, kind of like animals maybe drank out of it. And it was like, you know, maybe they were eating around it. it kind of made the, the kind of like a little pool area. Uh, and it wasn't very big. But I remember being a kid and being like, man, that's that's kind of cool, you know, to see that, you know, nature kind of taking over. But at the same time, it's taking care of the water source, uh, the clean water source. Because, dang, don't we know that river, some of our rivers in Oklahoma would be nasty. It'd be, dang, be, be having the bad guts all over the place. <laughs> but so we're, we're looking, you know, we look at it and we're like, oh, that's really cool. And so we kind of start making our way back down, you know, headed towards the river. And I didn't really notice the sun uh, kind of creeping down. I didn't really, you know, oh, it's still light outside. And one thing that was really, really kind of strange about that is, is, is it felt like that explore, like when we were exploring, it felt like quick, an hour or two maybe. And so we get down and we're, we make our way to the fence where our property line ends and the public land begins. And we climb through there, and you know, we, we you know, we're noticing, you know, there's got, there's some wildlife here. Like we know that there's some some things around here, and we're walking down this trail on public land next to the river. And we can see down into the river, and we start coming across these big pads, uh, mountain lion pads, big too, you know, the size of a human hand type of pad. And you know, I thought that was real kind of strange because there was only like a few of them, and then it was they were gone. And one thing about the the land behind my parents' house is that it gets quiet. Off, there'll be you know you'll hear birds, and then all of a sudden it's just dead quiet. And we noticed that when we were down there, it's dead quiet. And I thought that was kind of strange. And we kept you know being knuckleheads, we was just following the the pad, the pad prints, and we followed them back up into our land. And you know we're exploring, we're you know we're making sure we look everywhere around there. And like I said, it didn't seem like it, it would seem like an hour or two, and we kind of got lost. Like something kept, you know, I'm not going to say something, but like it felt like we were being guided somewhere. Like we kept going this way, then we go back this way and we go, oh, what's that? And, then, you know, we go over there. It was like something was trying to lead us off further down into away from the river, but more towards the heavy wood, like the heavy trees. And I remember kind of looking around like, I don't like, you know, I'm like, I don't even know where we're at. And so we start trying to make our way back to the house. We're like, okay, well, if we take, we went this way, the river's back that way. Well, we end up getting turned around, getting lost. Well, we end up making our way back eventually. And it was almost dark. Like when we, this is the weird part of the, about this is when we were in the woods, the woods were lit. Like it was the middle of the day. Like it was a lot of sunlight. And then when we, it's like we crossed a threshold and we get to the, the the flat part of where, you know, how my parents' land sits. And, like, we get back to the house and we can see it. It's getting dark. 
And I remember my mom, you know, brought that up to me, you know, probably a couple months ago when I brought this up to her. I remember, I said, remember that day when we was gone for a really long time? Or you, you thought we were gone for a really long time? And I told you it felt like we were only gone like an hour. And yeah, they. I remember my mom saying they were really nervous. They thought we, you know, something got us or, you know, they should really never know, you know, living next to a river. And we finally ended up coming back and it's almost dark. It's like getting like late. And they, my, I remember my aunt and my mom were real nervous. They were about to make their way down to see if they can find us. And, you know, that was one of my first experiences there, you know, and I know that there's LP out there. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we just had a lot of weird stuff going on. And, you know, one of the first nights we stayed there, like we were, we were trying to make the move back and forth, like at the time. And we still had things at the, at the, the trailer in Tahlequah and, you know, we're trying to, you know, get everything moved. And I remember, I think my dad was staying or my, I don't, I can't remember exactly who was staying where, but, but I remember, uh, the guy had two, uh, single beds, like twin beds. And we pushed me and my brother pushed them together. And we were staying in that living room because we, we like to watch TV before we go to bed. That's just kind of how we always were. And I'm sitting there, uh, watching It is like, uh, y'all remember those late night commercials of the, the old country songs or the, the R and B or soul songs. We were watching that. And, uh, I remember, um, uh, kind of looking over the corner of my eye and I, somebody was standing in that hallway. So the layout of the house at the time was you had this big living room area, which was separated by, uh, which is still there, a brick uh, chimney. And then you had basically the front door and then you had kind of uh, a, a bar area that stuck out Then you had another dining room. And then when you go back through the living room, there's a little hallway that connects the bathroom, one bedroom and another bedroom. So it was a two bedroom, one bath. And I'm sitting there in the corner or the far corner, and it seemed like the shadow was like right on the outskirts of that light. But I'm looking and I'm like, what is that? And so I go, hey, mom, mom. I said, kind of looked like a woman. You know, my mom is kind of a, has taller, you know, stature. And at the time she had the, uh, she had brown hair, kind of longer brown hair. And I said, mom, what are you doing? Because this person was just standing in the middle of that hallway, just looking at it. And I bumped Nate and I'm like, you see that? What's, what is that? And we're looking, and it's a person standing in that hallway. And I remember yelling for my mom, or ho- like, you know, whispering in a way. I was like, Mom, hey. And that thing in the, the shadow went into the bathroom. And then all of a sudden, the shadow come right back. And it's, you could tell it's a person. And it went right back into the, where my parents were staying, where their bedroom was. And I remember saying my mom's name like 10, 15 times. Like, I was trying to get her attention. Next morning, I, you know, I was like, hey, mom, did you hear me last night hollering for her? What was you doing trying to scare us? You know, my parents were always pranksters. We always like to kind of mess with each other. But, but she was like, no, that wasn't me. I didn't even get up last night. I was like, what? Are you sure? I, I, I called for you like a bunch. But no, it wasn't me. I don't know what that was. And so, you know, we always thought it might have been the ghost of the man that passed in the house. And, you know, I thought, always thought that was kind of interesting as kind of the first night we you know stayed there. And, you know, kind of, you know, calling back to the, the first early years episode, you know, we had somebody kind of messing with us. Uh, you know, my grandma was still alive at this time, and, and he was uh, away, I'll say away. And, uh, yeah, we always had somebody, you know, who messing with us. And I remember, you know, we had this, uh, one of the doors was kind of on the back side, And I remember uh, not seeing shadow figures, but kind of seeing, especially my parents' room, which later on in my high school years became my, my bedroom. Uh, but I remember seeing shadows, and it wasn't like, and it was, and it wasn't like shadows, like oh, it was a full on like apparition shadow I saw in the corner of the room. It was like they were in the corner of your eye, like I could see something moving around over here in my peripheral. I'd look, and there's nothing there. And you know, as we you know started living in that house and making that house our home, and my parents have done a really good job of making this house really nice. And you know, we they added on, but there was always things like uh, when we first moved on, like moved, like when we first, you know, the 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 layout that the house is now. Uh, when we started the back door, which is in the kind of in the living room where it goes straight out to that uh, the pasture, then it goes out to the woods. You know, there were nights where you know it was in the middle of the night, and uh, my dad would hear it'd be like kind of laughter or kind of a hoot, uh, like a hoot owl, but it wasn't like a it sounded like a person hooting. And, you know, my dad would always go out and we had a BB gun and he'd always just shoot out there. And, and, you know, I told my, my, my grandpa and, you know, he, that's where he told me uh, about the medicine where you can, you can kind of doctor up a bullet and it would go to your target of what's, you know, what's out there. You know, that's kind of where I learned that was him telling me about that. And and my dad, you know, shooting a BB gun, which isn't going to, wasn't, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody, but a, a person, but an animal, you know, may wound, but. 
you know, we always had things like that. And you know, one of the, the most scared I've ever been at, at that house um, was one night we, we had uh, recently, my, my papa uh, Solon's on my mom's side, you know, we were staying down there for a week. You know, we do that during the summertime when we were in middle school and we came back. Well, on the way back, we found a abandoned dog in his name and we ended up keeping him. You know, I begged and we begged and begged our mom, but he was kind of a wild dog. Like he, he was definitely a res dog. Like this dude only listened to me or my brother. And, you know, he, I think he always felt grateful for us for uh, saving him. And I miss him to this day. I think about him often, you know, when I see black dogs. He was a pitch black dog. Uh, he had, uh, he was uh, maybe half lab, half pit. And, you know, that's why I always get half pit breeds when I get dogs. Like my, my dog, Allie's half pit, half uh, husky. And, you know, Kobe, my other dog, is uh, she, she's Heinz, Heinz 47, kind of like me, but she got pit in her too. And so, but they, there's a loyalty there with those, with those animals. And, you know, one night, my, it, this is kind of followed up, but my brother, I guess before I tell that story, my brother, he'd always wake me up in the middle of the night because he'd be watching TV or playing Xbox or, you know, doing something like that. Well, he was asleep. And I look over and I'm like, man, what is this TV doing on? It was like, it was loud. You know, I'm like, golly, like what's going on? Because he would wait till I was asleep and then turn the TV on. And I'm sitting there you know, trying to fumble for the remote. And it's like two, three in the morning. And I look over and this dude, if y'all know WWE Undertaker, where he'd sit up, you know, he'd get beat down and, you know, he'd sit up and kind of look at you. That's what my brother did. I, th- my dad always laugh about that, but, but, uh. But yeah, he he did that, and I was like, man, I got spooked out. I was like, golly, I was like, man, I turned the TV off, rolled over, and just you know try to go back to sleep. But dude was his eyes were closed, but he was like up like the Undertaker and looking at me with his eyes closed. I thought that was kind of crazy. I was like, man, this dude's my brother's wilding out for that. I thought he's messing with me. But so then that kind of started some other stuff. And our dog Luke knew exactly where our bedroom was, and he'd always sleep in this. It's now a a gar- or kind of a uh, it's got like flowers and stuff now. But he would sit underneath our window at night and i don't know what woke me up that uh, one of the nights but he one night was crying and i never heard a dog cry like that and i look out the window and kind of look and he's just he's like shivering like uh like shaking he was so scared and i didn't see anything out there and i was kind of like man that's weird and so i tell my dad he's like oh well, i don't know what that was you know and you know a few times my dad would be out there standing uh like outside our window and he would knock on it just to mess with us my dad that's where i get my prankster stuff from is from him because he he always messing with me man and dad I, if you you know when you listen to this you'll remember yeah i know you'll remember knocking on our window trying to scare me or uh doing the the race because he knew that there were you know things kind of messing around out there and i think he tried to make light of it i think that's really what it come down to but but I saw that, and he was shaking. Luke, our dog, was shaking, scared. And so I'm like, I don't know what that is. So I, I end up laying back down next night. You know, I wake, I wake up again, and he's screaming. It's like a, it's a weird, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like a, a howl, but it's like a, a, a like he shook, like he, uh, uh, like, you know, when someone's real scared, and you, they make that uh, 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 sound. But it was like dog form. It, it, I've never heard that before from a dog. And I remember looking up. And we used to have, we still do, but there's a light that shines into that window and you could see the outline of something big walking in front of that uh, light that sh- like that kind of sh- shined in. And I don't know what it was. I didn't look out there, but Luke was so scared. And I, I'm wondering if that thing was trying to get him. You know, I always think it was Skilly or, you know, I know some people gonna going to get goosebumps when I say this, but Stagini or maybe Bigfoot or, you know, something like that. And... I remember that. That is one of the scariest I've ever been because I I'm getting I get goosebumps when I when I remember those that feeling that I had. And I told my parents and they were like, Well, you know, it's just maybe coyotes are after him. Like that's one thing about we we my family, we always try to explain something that we can't explain with something that makes sense to us because we're from my mom's from the country she you know dealt with a lot of stuff and you know my group my uh my papa solens he, he always you know experienced things and which i got stories from him i, I don't know if i want to i, I want to see if i can try to record him but he's got he has a story that he just experienced here in the last like month that i'm like man i don't know what that is what he saw on his on this pond bank and then he saw out of out of a wood line and then his buddy saw it too and this is out of uh, Council Hill, Shakota, Oklahoma. But anyways, you know, that night. So then the next morning I tell my parents and I'm just like, I don't know what, you know, I, I don't, I was, you know, scared. Didn't know what it was. And I, I always asked my grandpa when I'd see him, what, what do you think that could have been? He's like, well, you know, and then eventually as I got older, he started telling me about uh, my grandma 
and the things that she dealt with and the things that that we he's always you know he used to say he's like you're probably gonna see some things don't be scared you know always always just leave it alone and, and don't act scared just just know that you're you're protected um and so you know that's one thing that you know that i think back on on him and just he always was that uh kind of that it's gonna be all right. Like we're gonna get through this. It's gonna be scary, or you know, it's gonna be crazy, but we'll be all right. We'll make it. My dad's kind of that way too. Um, no, my dad's not kind of that way. My dad is that way. But um, but there was a lot of things going on, and we ended up getting our basketball goal out there. And I, you know, I can't tell you how many hours I spent out there working on my shot, dribbling on grass. And, and any youngsters out there listening to this podcast, it's, you know, if you're you know in middle school or early high school or even late high school and you want to work on your handles, go dribble on grass. Because there's a lot of times in games where you're herky-jerky and, you know, you lose control because that's not what you're working on. Like, you, you, your, your practicing is always trying to be perfect. It's not perfect. You know, certain floors have dead spots. You know, that's how I worked on my like, – people when I play pickup, like, how did you lose control, get it back, and then somehow figure out a way to get a shot off of somebody? So I dribbled on grass. So if you hear this, or if you're a parent that's got a kid, let them dribble on grass. Put a goal out there on grass. I, I swear by it. Your handles will be crazy. Plus, you'll be able to get your shot off. If you lost your dribble, you know, some people lose their dribble. Now they can't get a shot off. That it, it helps with all that stuff. It, it it adds an unpredictability to your game. Anyways, that's the coach side of me. Anyways, but we'd be out there playing. You know, my brother, we'd go to blows. Dang, we'd be out there fighting, just beating each other up, trying to trying to win. And there was a lot of times I could feel something watching me in that wood line. And that wood line's probably, a, probably 100 yards away, you know, and I always feel the eyes on me. And I always told my, my parents, like, man, I feel like something's watching me. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it's probably just a deer. But, you know, when you get that feeling of something that's stronger than you or kind of a predator, you're like, oh, man, that uneasiness. I always felt that out there. And it's the middle of the day. So then, my, you know, this kind of leads to a story I've told before, but my mom, you know, she would always mow. We ended up getting a, a riding lawnmower. Uh, being, push mowing, you know, 10 acres is kind of brutal, or five acres is kind of brutal. Well, she was riding around on that thing, and, you know, she'd end up hearing something. That, and she always says it sounded like a, a bird. But I remember when she, I was young and she first told that story back when we first moved there, and she was hearing something out there, and she sounded like laughter. Then now, and then it kind of turned it into a kind of a bird bird noise. And, you know, she always kind of chalked it up to something she couldn't explain or, you know, she tried to explain it with this. Um, but there was always weird stuff, you know, that like little things. It wouldn't be like, oh, I saw Bigfoot, you know. And as I got older, you know, with living there and, you know, coming home late, being young, you know, doing young people things. And, you know, also to, you know, just hanging out outside. Uh, we, you know, there was a few weird things that happened. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, remember as i'm sitting here talking but you know but i remember you know one night uh we're coming home well actually no i wasn't coming home it wasn't night it was when we got cause, so the bus lady this is another crazy thing so the bus lady would, would drop us off a mile, like a mile maybe a, a half a mile or three quarters of a mile from our house and we'd have to walk uphill and then walk downhill and then walk right back uphill this is for the first kind of you know month or two months of uh of school and my mom got so bad but about this because you know you just never know kids get took but anyways and I was walking home because I got dropped off before my brother because there's two two separate buses. The elementary bus ran, and then there was like a middle school, high school bus. And I'm walking, and I stopped, and I heard something stop with me. And, you know, it's kind of 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon coming off the bus. And, you know, on one on the left-hand side of the road is all woods, and it goes all the way back to the river. The other side, the other side of the was houses, uh, cleared land. But I remember walking, and I get going up the hill, and I hear something walking with me. And I stopped, and, I, and it stopped. And then I remember, uh, I'm, I don't know why I did this, but like I remember smelling like it was like a musky dog with dead animal smell. And I remember kind of looking off, like I remember kind of getting off the road and going towards in the woods and looking to see if it's roadkill. Because at this time, I'm already aware that, you know, there's Bigfoot out here. There's, there's things out here that we don't know, you know, what's going on. You know, I already knew about this stuff. So in my head, I was like, well, let's see if, I, I mean, if it's a dead carcass, then maybe it's just a, you know, a cat following me or, you know, something, just trying to make sure I understood what it was. And I ended up looking and I, I didn't find any roadkill or nothing, but it smelled. It was so strong. I remember I can still, I, there's every now and then I kind of still smell it. Like it's just that pungent odor of dog and dead animal, like rotten meat. And I smell it every time. Sometimes when like you ever open up a package of bad meat, that's what it smells like. That's what it smelled like. And 
I remember looking around and not seeing any like animal or like squirrel or raccoon. And so I'm bebopping along and I notice it again. I go up the hill and I get to the first house on the left because it's like all woods, but then there's houses that are like house, woods, house, woods, and then our house. And I remember kind of stopping again right before that house. I looked and, there was, and it stopped with me and I'm like, okay. So then I took off running. I was like, all right, this ain't going to get me. I was like, Shh. I took off and I had like nine ba- book- books in my bag. Man, slapping me on the back of like on my back, like just man, I was out of there. And you know, I remember that happened a few times, and I remember just getting scared. And I remember telling my mom, like, "Hey, you know, uh, is there any way?" And that's when my, you know my mom's like, "Well, y'all getting dropped off." And so then we started getting dropped off next to our house, and she had to turn around. And she, the bus lady, was mad. She's, "You're gonna make me do a 19 point turn in this monster bus?" And hey, them's the brakes, lady. No. <laughs> But, you know, there was a lot of weird things, um, you know, and, and there's continually to be weird things and uh, over there. Not as much now, I think. I think just things have kind of died down. People have passed away, you know, uh, things of that nature. But but I always remember, uh, I always remember that night of seeing that shadow and, you know, kind of thinking about stories that, you know, when I, I moved back to my parents for a short period of time and I had my two dogs and my dogs were, you know, get spooked out, I guess you could say. They're city dogs. But um, like I said, guys, this is um, this is uh, early years part two, and I and this third part is going to be about my high school uh, years, teenage or teenage years. And you know, I preface this because there's a lot of these kind of weird, you know, things, weird occurrences that I'm sure everyone, you know, at some point goes through. But one thing that I always want to, uh, you know, preface in saying is that like perception is so crazy. Like I remember being. A younger guy and being so spooked out by certain things and now as I, i've gotten older i'm like eh, that's not really that creepy but um so like i said i mentioned you know in the previous episode when it comes to the early years you know we moved from Tahlequah to the muskogee area i went to went to high school at four gibson high school and you know my middle school years were kind of you know they're they're pretty creepy there's some weird stuff going on um and during that time we we found a dog and his name is luke and we we called him luke and he he loved us so much, um, like defended us. And I, he had some kind of crazy things happening to him in the night and he'd be crying and, you know, go listen to part two for the full story on that, you know, but as a freshman in high school, you know, we, we stayed in this building and if you know, Fort Gibson high school, it's a big roundabout. You enter one way, you loop around, it's a one way. And it basically the first part is the high school. You'll loop back around. You got, you'll go next to the football field in between the cafeteria, loop around, or k- kind of keep going on the loop, you hit the middle school. Well, if you keep going, at the time, the freshmen were in that building that was next to the middle school. And there had always been rumors of this child. And the story, I've, I've mentioned this before, briefly, um, but this child was connected to somebody in that building or had some type of, and I can't remember if it's the teacher. I had, I had asked around about this, and I was told that it was a teacher that I guess he was in the building at some point. But this child has always been there. And this child had a really bad home life and connected with this teacher. It was a young boy. And I remember I, I remember going to church camp and uh, I'd asked one of the teachers who was in that building. She was a, a freshman English teacher. And I asked her, I was like, I hear that there's a little boy and it's kind of creepy in there at night or kind of dark. And she's like, yeah, uh, it is pretty creepy in there. So uh, to describe this building, there's no inside. Like, so the hallway has no windows. So you walk in. You would see the assistant principal, which or the freshman principal, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you go through the doors, take a left through the through the the first set of uh, main doors, take a left, and you'll see the office on the right. You keep going, and it's a big, basically circle with bathrooms in the middle. And so basically, there's no windows. So when the lights are off, they're off. There's you can't see in front of you. It's that dark. It may you might be able to see a little bit because of the emergency, but it's dark. And so each teacher had classrooms on the outside and so the classrooms would have windows and you could you know the light would come in and as y'all know my math is not what it used to be it it never was really <laughs> you know but in that building freshmen and uh, so freshmen were mainly in there and then as a sophomore you would have like maybe like a ge- geometry class or whatever and freshman year i was asking her i said uh this teacher i said well what do you what have you what what have you seen she's like well you're probably not going to believe me and you probably won't really care, you know, because we're, you know, freshmen in high school. But she's like, one, you know, one day I was working, I was grading papers, 
and I was getting ready for the next day. I was, she said she always liked to prepare and she rolled this ball and this boy always rolled the ball back. So she thought she was just kind of, you know, well, well, this ball had rolled to her from the hallway and it came out of the darkness. And if I'm getting this story wrong, someone correct me, but this is how it was, you know, this is how I remember it being told to me. But basically some, somehow this ball and she started playing with this little boy and she'd roll the ball back. And she get back to what she's doing, and all of a sudden she look over, and the ball's back to where she where it was left. And I didn't really believe that. I was like, I don't know about that. And so we went to school in there, and and you know, one thing that was kind of crazy that I had heard from some other uh, classmates was was when we were in that building, there was a so as you the round the big circle that I I just told you guys about. If you keep going down, so there's a little hallway at the end of it. You know, on each end of the circle, there's a hallway that goes into this gym. It's I believe it's where the middle school cheerleaders, anyways, at the time, one of the janitors uh, or somebody in the school had heard some kid, a kid playing in there, a ball bouncing, and they went to go look in there to kind of get onto them, and there was nobody in there, and they were like, what? Mm, that's kind of weird, but they had always said that building was haunted, so I always tried to see if I could catch something, you know, I was always in the hallway, you know, I was, you know, Mr. Heathen, I guess, but. You know, I was, I was always trying to see if I could see something in the bathroom, you know, kind of get real creeped out. And my sophomore year is when I seen, I think I seen that boy. So as I mentioned before, my math is not as, not that great. And the head coach, as a sophomore, I, I, was, I was getting to play a little bit more uh, on the basketball team. And he goes, your grades are not that great. And I'm like, I know they're terrible. I suck at math. He's like, you need to go and get some tutoring from this teacher who was the geometry teacher. I'm not going to say any names, but I go, all right. What, you know, so I went to him. I said, I'd like to get some tutoring. And it was in that, that building I'm, I'm just told you guys about. And I'm sitting there and I may have, if you haven't, if you've already heard this story, then, you know, you get to hear it again. But if you haven't and you're new, I have a, there's been a lot of people new to the podcast. Um, but bear, you know, this is a, I was creeped out as a, as a sophomore. So I'm sitting there and, He's telling me, and, be, and by the way, I did not understand anything he was saying. I'm just like, man, just get me a get me a C. That's all I need, man. C's get degrees. Everybody knows that. That's easy. That's light work. E, a C? You can't give me a 70? Come on now. <laughs> you mean to tell me that I got to have a B? No. C's get degrees. Come on now. Everybody know that. So I'm sitting there, and he's just dry. I'm just like, man, carry the one divide the little exponent on the on the right hand corner of the number and i'm like oh my god and it's like a fraction too you're just like god man this guy's killing me he's trying like this is attempted murder on my on my psyche right now all of a sudden i kind of look over the corner of my eye and i saw somebody standing there in the doorway right outside of the of the door like right where the light hit like where the light hits the darkness and they're standing just right out from that and I looked, and they, it wasn't there. Like, it like ran away. Like, it looked like it had taken off in the hall. And I look at him, and he looks at me, and he just keeps going on. All of a sudden, I look over the corner of my eye. Somebody ran past the door again. And I was like, what? I was like, I looked at I looked, He could tell that I saw something. And I looked. And this the, the teacher that was, that was, that was helping me, uh, reluctantly, reluctantly, he had seen this boy, but he had always been kind of, not a believer in the paranormal, I guess you could say. He was a real, real old school preacher. And I saw that run by the door. And I look over and he, I look at him and he looks at me and he just quietly walks over to the door and closes it and then goes back to, you know, what he was doing. And I had, I had told some people that, you know, as I, as I got out of high, as I, high school was progressing, I'd tell them and, and people would tell me their stories about seeing this boy or somebody that looked like, it looked like a child was running, you know, running or standing or a shadow. Or I think even one time somebody heard laughter in that building. But it was kind of creepy, though. It was real creepy. Um, you know, as I got older, I'd start, you know, I'd, I always tell you guys I'd ask my grandpa questions. I asked my dad questions. I talked to my uncles. You know, I just try to get as much information on things and what people have seen. Because I think a lot of time, if I have a fear of the unknown. I have a fear of not knowing. And I always have to know. That's kind of my, I'm kind of weird about that. So if I don't know something, I'm going to be asking questions. And sometimes those questions are uncomfortable questions. Because I'm like, what is this? Why are we doing that? What, what, what is the point of this? And sometimes, you know, it comes off as abrasive, I guess. But I have a fear of the unknown. And that's why. And so... You know, as I got older, you know, we would hear different 
you know, different things. And, you know, one of the stories that comes to mind, we used to have, or we still do, Tribal Town, you follow Canadian Tribal Town, uh, had storytelling. And uh, my freshman, sophomore year, one of, I think it was, I think one year it was at the, the tribal or the Tribal Town headquarters. And then another one was at my uncle, John Mark Tiger, shout out to him. It was at his house. And we were all sitting there. I was probably sophomore. Uh, we were sitting there and somebody was telling a Bigfoot story about how they, not how they, it's not like they cloak or, you know, I always use the word cloak, but they kind of disappear. And I can't remember the story, but I, I remember I looking over and it sounded like something was running through the brush, like pat, like running through like trees. Um, and I'm like, looking, at I'm like, what is that? And it's like powering through and then it stopped. I remember somebody, one of the olders, and I think they're one of them, a cousin or something, was like, oh, it's time to probably wrap that up. You know, he's, 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 he knows we're talking about him, you know, and that was one thing that I always, you know, I always found really in- interesting about that is when you talk about them. Another story that I heard um, from there is, you know, it's real, it's, there's a lot of spook lights out there, out at uh, my Uncle John's house. And, you know, we'd always hear stories, uh, you know, especially from my uncle. You know, he was out one night. We were having storytellings. I might have been a junior, and uh, he was telling me this story that he had saw eyes shine. You know, from the from the tree line when he was. Dang, I don't want to be telling his business, but he's. I think he's using the bathroom or something or something. But but um, but he saw some eyes shine out there. You know, when we were telling those stories. But you know, getting back to kind of you know m- my stories and and whatnot and. You know, there's a lot of things that I'm I have trouble remembering because I think it's just I have a lot on my mind and a lot going on that I I sometimes forget and and you know if I miss stories eventually I'll just tell like oh stories you know I missed um, but as I got older you know as we get older in high school you we kind of almost think we're almost kind of invincible and if you haven't heard my alleged cult or cult activity episode um, there is you know there that episode's out. Um, but that happened during my junior and senior year. Um, but the story that I'm, I'm going to tell now uh, is a little bit connected to that. You know, we used to really go out, and it's called The Bottoms. Um, it's out kind of behind OG&E out in Fort Gibson, after you're headed to Muskogee. And we used to mess around a lot, a lot down there. Uh, my buddy got a, a Jeep. It was like a 95 Jeep. It was old, but it, man, it was a tank. And we'd go back there, and we'd mess around, and we'd do all types of, you know, young people things. We'd yeah, I guess I'm incriminating myself, but we was uh, we was burning things back there. Not like anything crazy, like we weren't burning, you know, trees down or nothing. But there'd be old couches out there, and we'd find, you know, lighter fluid, and we just burn it up, you know. I mean, allegedly. I don't know. But, you know, one night we was out there, we had a little fire going. We was out there just talking. And there's this little, like, there's like an inlet that comes out from the river. And when it rains real bad, that little area that we had the fire w- wouldn't be there. It's all flooded out, but. It was kind of a dry, kind of a dry winter, I guess you could say. And we're all sitting out there. It's cold. We got the fire going, and all of a sudden you hear it sound like something was like running through the trees. And we all sit there and we were like, "What is that?" And it sounded like a bull in the china shop, just going through, boom, just running through it, just breaking everything. And you know, the next, you know, the next day we ended up bailing out of there. We got so scared, we didn't know what was going on. And we came back, and there was it looked like something had mowed down, like a like a bulldozer had run, like ran through that little strip and was pulled trees up from the root. Uh, another time out there, uh, you know, in the in the episode that I talked about, we you know we had we saw a bunch of dog bones and you know things like that. You know, we would we'd always run around, man, in that little jeep, and I always talk about Merle Home Park. Um, you know, one night we did a lot of a lot of you know walking trails down there, and you know, one night we, we just got done, you know, messing around and it was kind of spooky out there that night. Something was off, you know, the, I don't know if it was like a owl or some type of night bird or something, you know, making this kind of sound. And I remember we're pulling off and my buddy's driving, he's driving his Jeep and, you know, we're, we're passing the actual, uh, I don't, it's not called Merle home anymore. I can't remember what it's called, but it's something house, but I call it Merle home, but the Merle home, we was driving by it, and on the side of the house, there's this little light with a door. And we're driving by, and all of a sudden, I look, and there's a man standing there. He had old timey clothes on, and I didn't. I thought I was the only one seeing it, so I'm like, "Man, what is that?" And my buddy was already looking at it, and dang, we about ran off the road, about ran into a dang telephone pole. But he was like screaming, 
Like he was like, what is that? Because the man didn't look like a man. I don't know how to describe him, but I remember his hat. It was like a taller hat, but he didn't look like he looked human. Maybe he looked tall. He was tall. But I remember he, I remember my buddy was like, what is that? Like he was like literally screaming and he like was driving. So he lost track and about ran. Then we ran off the other side of the road and like almost hit a telephone pole. And then I'm like, hey man, look at the road. You know, I was trying to yank on a, on the dang uh, steering wheel. And we got back on the road and he was shook. He was so shook because he was the type that really didn't believe in these things. And, you know, he didn't really, he's like, eh, you know, maybe they, maybe it's real, maybe it's not. But I don't know what that was. Like I said, I can remember the hat and I couldn't tell if he had long hair, but he looked, yeah, I don't know if he looked Indian or if it was just a old timey, you know, 1800s garb. I don't know, but he was real tall, but he just, he stood right underneath that light that was hanging about halfway up, you know, up the, the side of the house, but, but that show, showed down on the door. Um, you know, he had another experience too that, you know, I, eventually I will tell it'll be like its own thing. Um, but then that Jeep, well, there's a, we have another full, very long story that is connected to, uh, a few stories I'm going to tell on this, on this podcast, but I want to lead up to it because I don't want to be very long winded with it. But, but, you know, in that Jeep, we would all, like I said, we'd always go down to the bottoms and there's this, uh, out towards that way, there's a little road that kind of juts off to the right. And it takes you down to these baby graves down in Fort Gibson. And what, and you know, there was a lot of stories going on at the time that you know there'd be some you know classmates or people or uh, upperclassmen would go out there and their car would die. And there's a story that sticks out to mind. You know, there's a group of girls went down there one night. I think it was right before Halloween, and they ended up getting stuck down there, and the car wouldn't start, and they could hear things running, like they could hear little feet, you know, around them. And and what comes to mind is LP, but they freaked out like they were so scared and finally they got that car to start and they took off and they were in this little bitty like i can't remember if it was like a honda or something but it was like a little big car and so i heard that story and i said well, let me see if i go down there real quick see what's going on and so it was about it was about six of us we crammed into this little jeep and when we when i we pulled up to the this tree it's like a one it was at the time it was one tree that jutted up and there was all these little graves and I, I had a weird feeling. I had a really weird feeling. I was like, oh, something's not right. I don't feel good about this. And so I kind of stayed next to the, the car or to the uh, to the Jeep. And, you know, all my non-native friends was going out there messing around. I was like, all right, well, I said, I said, all right, man, it's getting weird. And so we, we end up, you know, I, they end up coming back to the Jeep. And I look over and I thought I saw a little head, like a little, like almost a child, like probably two to three years old, like they were peeking around the tree. And I said, let's go. And one of the girls saw it too. And she was like, oh, we got to get out of here. Well, so we all jump in there and we're all trying to cram in there. Everybody jumping in there in, in the back of the Jeep and in the front seat. And when we're pulling away, you know, we, we, we take off, we're gone. And I wish I still had this picture, but I had a picture of this. It was a little, it was a child's hand. It was the, it was a picture of a small child's hand because his, his Jeep was so dirty. It had like a film of dirt. So if you put your hand on it, you could, you know, make an imprint. But when we pulled off, and I thought, like, we were driving, like, across the way from the casino, and I thought I, you know, I kind of looked back, I thought I saw, like, a little handprint, and I shined a light on, on the, on the, with the flashlight, and you could see a little child's handprint on his Jeep, like, it had hit the Jeep, like, it was telling us to go, and I'm getting goosebumps talking about that one, because I hadn't really said much about that one, I know I always tell stories, you know, but. That's one thing I always, you know, preface now. That's why people say, oh, man, you, you could come to a cemetery. I'm like, man, I'm good. Trust me. You know, we used to spend time out at Bragg's Cemetery. And we would go out there every now and then. The first time we went out there, uh, I was with like 12 people. And in this cemetery, there's a cemetery on both sides of the road. It's just, I guess it's old, you know, all the people that have passed in, in that town. And we went out there one night and one of my, one of the, he's a knucklehead, but he was messing around with some of the stuff on the graves, and one of the graves had a Jack Daniels bottle, and it was like how about half full. The lid was still on it, and this oh, this Joker took, was messing around on with it, and I was like, oh my god, this is about to be bad. So we're walking down, and you know it looked like they had cleared land for like future you know people that pass on, and we're walking, and I stop, and they keep going on, and I hear something basically walking with us, but in the tree line. The tree line's about 50 yards away, so it's, you know, something fast could have got to us quick, but I kept hearing it, I, and so I told him, I said, hey, y'all stop real quick, 
And so they, they were all talking. They were like, man, all right. And they stopped. And then I heard, and it was like, you know when something's following something like you, and you're like, you stop, and then it stops like, it's like, you stop, and then it's like, and it stops. Because it doesn't know when you're stopping. And I heard it, so I was like, all right, keep going. So we're walking, we're walking, we're getting towards the end of the, the edge of the tree line up, up front and ahead of us. And there's, like I said, a tree line on the side, on both sides of us, and then the cemetery behind us, or the graves behind us. And we stop again, and that thing does the same thing. That sh- sh- And I'm like, okay, what? let's let's get out of here. Because you guys hear in the intro, I get that spidey sense, and I know it's it's time. It is time to go. And so we end up we end up leaving that first time. Well, I bring back me. I was like my brother and a couple of our friends, his friends, and then a, I think a couple of my friends. And we're loaded down in my old '98 Chevy red truck, and we're sitting there, and we see somebody. It look I don't know if it was a caretaker or somebody, but we park and we go in, and we thought we hear we saw a shadow against one of the buildings. It looked like something had walked by the, with the shadow. Dang, we took off. One of the guys. Tried to jump the fence when he could have just went through the, the regular gate. He jumped the fence, got his leg caught. He was dang neck deep in dang briars. He had briars all over his body. He was stuck in the he was stuck in the briar patch. So we had to get him out. And there's a shadow, whatever this thing is, is lurking over here in the shadows. And we had to rip him out of there. And man, he had so many dang burrs on him and briars on him. He was crying. He was like, "Man, get this off of me!" And we're like, "We can't, man. It's too many. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to take them clothes off." But you know, there's a lot of weird things out here, especially out in these kind of secluded areas. And that cemetery butts up against the national uh, reserve over there. It's kind of in that same area. But you know, my my experiences with cemeteries have always been very very weird. Um, and I think this this final story I'm going to share with you. There's a lot more stories that I could tell. Um, that you know that come to mind as I'm talking, but uh, we're getting about almost 30 minutes into the podcast, and I want to leave y'all with this story because this sets up an, my my story that I've told once. I've only told that this story once on a podcast, and really twice total. But this story sets that sets that story up. And so, dang, one night we were like, man, let's. I had I had never messed with the Ouija board. I had heard stories from um you know people's parents. Um, like I had a buddy of mine whose mom did it and that, that board was a wooden board and it followed people around. Like it was engraved. Like they had, like someone had engraved that to that person and you know, they had, they had that Ouija board follow them, which is, you know, which is weird. And I had another buddy of mine whose mom did it and she had issues all the way throughout, you know, and tried to, you know, she tried to use church to get rid of this thing. But this thing, that uh, wooden Ouija board followed them around too her around so i've had friends tell me these stories you know they'd ask them hey you know when am i going to die or uh what happens what happened am i going to get married or who are you you know things like that and i've always been interested in that you know i was like man i kind of want to know what's going on and so i told my mom the story a couple years ago boy she was mad too we probably shouldn't have done that but so we uh one night we we're kind of cruising around looking for something to do might have been like a random night or whatever it was kind of rainy out and uh we're uh we're driving around and we go hey let's see if and this is back when hastings was still in in muskogee in that strip mall right as you come into town and so we go in there and we're just milling around you know i like to rent movies i'd, I'd probably rent like five or six movies and watch them all within a day and then uh, and then uh you know bring them back like the same day to get like the extra credit and one of my buddies one of my brother's buddies is like hey man there's a ouija board over here and i st- i go over there real quick and i'm like man and and I can't remember if it was if it was cardboard or if it was actually wooden. And I know people always joke, like laugh around. Oh, it's just a, ha- a Hasbro uh, Ouija board. I think this was like a wooden Ouija board. Like it wasn't by Hasbro, to my knowledge. I can't really remember though. But I remember I was like, man, I ain't got no money. I got like twenty bucks for the week. I was working. I was barely working. I was like, man, I we need to do this tonight. And we're all kind of like laughing. And, and my buddy goes, this is crazy. My, bud, uh, my brother's buddy goes, yeah, man, let me pull from the basketball fund. So we were like, we were selling stuff. Like we were selling chocolate bar- bars and whatnot. And if you're like, if your family didn't make a donation to the basketball team, then you had to sell these to make that donation. And he, one of the guys is like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll just use this money I have for the candy. And it was like 30 something, maybe even 40. I, I can't remember. Is it between 30 and $60? But I know it can't be 60. And so... We're like, man, you're an idiot, but all right, let's do it. So, <laughs> so we buy this Ouija board from Hastings, and it, I, like I said, I don't think anything of it. I'm like, ah, oh, it's just one of those fake, you know, it's not really anything crazy. 
but the the little thing that you used to for the for to spell things out was wooden. And I remember that's what I, I that's one thing I do remember. And and so we're like, where can we do this at? So we're all plotting. We're in like two or three carloads, like group of guys. Where can we do this at? Well, people start throwing out ideas. I said, well, I kind of want to go to Morrow Home and do this. And then they're like, well, that's in Tahlequah. It's too far. You know, it's like 630. It's already dark. It's cold. It's rainy. And then someone goes, let's go to the National Cemetery in Fort Gibson. And I'm like, bet. Let's do that. Let's go. So we go. And so the gates were open. We didn't have to do nothing. The gates were already open. We drive around. We drive all the way to this back patio. At the time, there was no graves out there. But now I believe there are. And so this patio is by itself kind of towards the back of the cemetery. And we're sitting there, and I have my hands on it. My brother has his hands on it, and everybody else has their hands on it. We got like, like you know, two fingers or one finger. And someone goes, well, let's ask him who, who's here. And so I promise you, I promise you with everything, I put no pressure. I just touched it. Like, it's like barely touching it. My brother was barely touching it. And we both looked at it and said, well, let's just barely touch it. Because we know, you know, we're, we know that we know, you know, we're probably not supposed to be doing this. And so we barely put the... Her fingertips on it, and that thing starts moving when he asks the question. And I look at everybody, and we, I like looked at everybody. I said, "Yo, hey, y'all, stop, stop playing around for real. Stop playing around." And they were like, "Dude, I swear to you." And so we, everybody just barely touches it, and we asked the same question. I can't. Believe, I think we asked who who was here, and it spelled out some random name. And like, I remember getting this sensation, like the Spidey sense. And I'm like, "All right, I'm done." I look at my brother. I said, "All right, you're done too. Like, we're not messing with this." So the two, the two couple other people started mess, like started doing it. And they were like, "Okay, well." Uh, they were like, uh, you know, what is my name? And it spelled out this dude's name. I'm not gonna say his name. We asked, what year did you die? And it spelled, and it did a year. Like I said, I can't remember the details because I was kind of far away and I wasn't like I started getting weird. Like I started feeling something and I started getting real spooked out. This is I might have been a I might have been a early like it might have been my junior year, maybe no, it might have been my senior year. I can't exactly remember, but I remember that I yeah, it was my senior year. It was early in my senior year. It was like September. And so I remember watching them and I'm being like, man, this is weird. And then one of the guys asked, when am I dying? When do I die? And it started to spell it out. And that's when the dudes, like both of them were like, no, 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 no. That thing's moving. Like that thing was for real moving. And so we kind of got spooked out. And so I could feel something was there. Like I felt something in that gazebo. Like it wasn't human. And so I told my brother, I said, let's, let's get out of here, man. And the, one of the guys that bought it, he's like, hey, man, what do I do with this? I said, you got to throw it away, man. Like you got to get rid of it. He's like, okay. And so we go to another cemetery. I know we knuckleheads. You're you're hearing this and you're like, what is wrong with you? So they get it out and they put it over this well or whatever this is and they and they use it one more time. And I can, I think they asked who was here and then, you know, some, you know, one question, then they threw it down into this well. So they always say with them, you got to I don't I can't remember if you got to burn them or do something. You got to get rid of them to like forever. And you know, from that time on that we use that. Now, I was told later on. Now, I don't know if this is true. You can take this with a grain of salt with the information I'm about to give you. That this Ouija board showed back up at this guy's house. I don't know. I never saw it. I don't I don't know really if I believe it or not, but I never like I kind of moved on after that. Like I was like, all right, I'm done with that. Like I'm not messing with that. And so um things started to happen in as I've as I got older that affected, you know, or I, really as the year went on, not really as I, I guess as I got older. But when I but once I touched once I, we messed with that and I, for for even now, I'll tell you guys this. I hear this bird. It's a certain sound. It almost sounds like a like someone's trying to like someone's trying to make a bird call, and it's not really quite a bird. And I hear it at night. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but I hear it randomly, and I hear it when something like when things are like when there may be something about to happen or like some type of omen. I hear this this bird, and I've heard it. I've heard that bird since my senior year in high school. And, you know, one, I was with, at, this is, you know, as I got older, but I would ask people like, do you hear that? And they were like, what, hear what? The bird. And I'm sitting there and I can hear it. This thing is going off. And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. You're like, you might be crazy for real. But there are some things that, you know, as I got old, as, as I, the, my senior year progressed, um, you know, there were things that were happening in my, my parents' house that, you know, I really don't talk about, but I'm going to share it on, on a future episode when I feel comfortable. Cause to this day, I, I still I still see shadows. Um, I see them quite a bit in my peripherals and, and you know in my you know moving around. Um, I, sometimes I feel watched. I guess you could say too. Um, not as much now, um, but definitely you know in the last couple of years. But 
But that Ouija board story, I believe, started a whole chain of events with multiple people in that that happened in that uh, in that circle that night. And you know, things have taken you know certain turns and and things like that. And and you know, but that that'll be the next episode. So that'll be my uh, I'll finish it up with my that story, and then I'll start talking about some college stuff. Like I got. There's some pretty weird stories, you know. I've, you know, I haven't told the doll story when I was in Houston. I haven't told the, I don't know what this guy was, but he basically, you know, was. I call him. A, I call him. I think he was trying to do something to me. I don't know, but in Houston, and um, you know, more investigations, more, um, you know, at Merle Home Park, um, you know, going out to to Honeycomb Bluff, uh, which is in Eufaula. Uh, you know, there's a lot more stories that i have in my high school and my college years that you know that that i could do on a separate podcast but i appreciate you guys uh for for continuing to listen to the podcast and to support the podcast i got a lot of new listeners um as of late i appreciate you um like subscribe share and rate on spotify and apple it helps the podcast out um but you know the more stories are to come and and let me know if you if you've had any of these types of types of experiences because um i don't hear a lot of ouija board stories i think that's might be a, like a nine 80s 90s and 2000s type thing i know that that movie that came out kind of made everybody like oh, i don't know if i want to mess with them but let me know if you have a ouija board story i'd like to hear it but like i said guys um go to the link in the description get yourself something nice um out of the uh, merch shop and like i said guys uh facebook you hold a tiger message me let me know you listen to the podcast send me your stories this is creepy um part six yeah part six is um is coming on the back end of fourth july so the next week um and then follow me tiktok war cry pod and instagram war cry pod and i appreciate everyone that listened to the podcast and i'll catch you on the next